Hi everyone, welcome to part two of my steampunk gas mask tutorial. If you haven't already seen part one, Apocalypse from Apocalypse, you should check it out by clicking the link in the upper right hand corner. In this video, I'll show you how I painted the gas mask, as well as attaching the straps and the eye meshy bits. I've also thrown in some behind the scenes footage of the making of Apocalypse from Apocalypse, in case that interests you. Okay, let's finish this mask. Roll out a protective paper barrier on your work surface and squeeze out a huge glob of black paint. Now go ahead and paint your whole mask black. I recommend giving it three coats of artist's acrylic paints. You know the ones that come in the tube that you squeeze out and you look like an artist? Don't forget to paint the outside edges of the mask and the inside edges of the eye holes. But don't paint the inside edge of the nose or the end of the tube that goes into the nose. Because when we put the two of them together, we want a nice clean surface for the glue to adhere to. And make sure you drink some yummy tea while you're waiting for it to dry. Next, grab your DecoArt Americana Decor Metallics in antique bronze and silver. Cut a square out of a t-shirt from a place you've never been. Put on a stylish rubber glove. Wrap the square of the t-shirt from the place you've never been around your finger so there's no wrinkles right at your fingertip. A little dip in your metallic paint and spread it out on a piece of scrap paper. It's really important to get most of the paint off your finger, especially right on the tip where it tends to build up. Otherwise, it could create ugly smears on your finished project. Once you've got most of the paint off on your paper, apply the rest to your gas mask with your finger using a gentle rubbing motion. The nice thing about applying the paint with your finger is it kind of keeps the paint away from any raised edges, which helps give it that antique look in which the spots that are open to a lot of wear are going to be the shiniest. If you think of your mask as being made up of layers of foam, it's best to do the lowest layers first, because it's very easy to bump into one of the higher layers with your finger, getting maybe the color you don't want onto that layer. This way, if that does happen, you can paint that section black again before proceeding with the next color. So just keep dipping and rubbing until everything you can cover with your finger is done. You'll find that there are some spots on this mask that are really hard to reach with your finger. So for that, use a small paintbrush. Similar procedure, dip it in the paint and then get rid of most of the paint on the paper. Then apply the paint where it needs to go using a dabbing motion with your paintbrush. Slowly build up the color until the intensity matches the rest of the paint. Once you've done one color of metallic paint, have a look at your project. And unless you're a super crazy careful person, you're going to have some paint in places you don't want it to be. So grab your black paint and cover up any of those little mistakes. Once that's dried, grab your silver and do all the silver bits. Rather than worry about avoiding the screw heads when you're applying the silver, you can just go back and paint them black and then apply the bronze on top of that. Once you're happy with your paint job, you can glue in your filter canister. Now, go grab some fly screen from, uh, I was gonna say a hardware store. Well, wherever you do get it from, cut out two pieces the size of your eye nuts and paint them black. If you have problems with the holes filling in with paint, set it down on a clean section of paper and go over it with a fairly dry brush. Keep moving it to clean sections of paper until all the holes are not filled in anymore. Once your black paint is dry, you can apply your metallic paints with your finger. They are super easy to glue into your mask because you can glue right through the mesh. I do quite like using the mesh because it keeps the mask a lot cooler and although it does impair your vision slightly, it's not too bad. Okay, all we have to do now is make the band. Cut out piece 19, two piece 21s, and one piece 22 from 2mm foam. The length of your piece 21s and 22 will vary on your head size, so check the pattern for more details. You will also need to cut a piece 20 from some thin plastic. I've used a peanut butter jar lid in the past, which I could cut with scissors, but today I'm using slightly thicker plastic, which I will cut with my jeweler's saw. You can learn more about my jeweler's saw by clicking the link in the upper right corner. Once you've cut piece 20 with the two little slots in it, you can carefully heat it up and then bend up the tab. Line up piece 20 just a couple millimeters back from the end of piece 22, pushing the tab right through the strip and glue it into place. Then add more glue on the other side, sandwiching it between piece 22 and piece 19. Now you can take the thin strip of piece 19 and wrap it all the way around the end. You need to make sure it's not wrapped too tight because you still need to be able to slide a strip of foam in through that hole. Once you've got it right, you can glue it down. 
glue the band to the mask with an overlap of 40 millimeters to give it good strength. Glue piece 21 to the other side of the mask, slide the strip through the clasp, and try it on. This will give you a good idea of where you need to punch the holes in the band. Punch a series of holes on either side of that mark, about 13 millimeters apart. Now glue your other strip 21 to the top tab and put the mask on again, looping that top band around the back band in a place that's comfortable for you. And then glue it together. You can also add a little strip around piece 22 to keep the extra bit sticking out the end from flopping around in the wind while you're, I don't know, riding a horse? You can give the band some paint if you like, and you are done. Totally done. So you might as well celebrate by watching some behind the scenes video. Hi, my name is Chris, and I'm wearing to wear gas masks. We're going to put a trailer later. <laughs> And you're ten feet underground When you're so deep you're about to drown When you're in the lost and found Cause heartaches only last a day So now, three, two, one, rock <laughs> you could wear that to school. <laughs> it would be total face protection in the winter. The sky meets the ground and draws a line. It's been true for the longest time. Just know that somewhere there's a Okay, sign. yeah, go. Go home. Yeah. And action. my mommy. Right away for the train. Oh, the train. <laughs> train. <laughs> You get to carry a paintbrush! Yeah. Well, that's it. If you want the pattern, you can get it here, or you can watch more of my videos over here. And if you'd like to see what I did to change this gas mask into the Doctor Who Empty Child gas mask, just let me know in the comments, and if there's enough people, I will make a quick little video on that as well. Thanks for watching. See ya.